Pastor Julia Austin. Happy New Year to you. It's such an exciting time to be in the kingdom. I'm glad you joined us on this morning. Boy, does God have a word for us on today. Come on, let's go. Let's let's enter into his 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 courts with praise and to his gates with thanksgiving on today. We made it to 2023. In, in God, such a gracious God, such a wonderful, perfect, holy God. What an amazing God we serve. Worship him today before who he is. Great and mighty are you, Lord. What an exciting time. I'm honored to be with you this morning. Let's get directly into the word. Before we do that, let's say a word of prayer to the Lord. Father, we just, we praise your name. We honor you. We we magnify you on today, and we thank you for the opportunity just to come boldly to your throne of grace to obtain mercy. Oh, we're so grateful for your word and your grace and your mercy on today, for your ever-presence, Lord God. And we thank you now, God, for meeting us in this place, for speaking to us on today, Lord God. We say let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in, the, in your sight. Oh, Lord, you alone are our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody, anybody know that sometimes our houses need fixing up? <laughs> the title of my message today is Remodeled and Upgraded. Um, this is a different message than I ever, I really ever did before because I usually start with a lot of scripture, and I am going to start with one passage of scripture in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, in the Gospel of of John, the Bible reads, the thief, Jesus is speaking, and he says, the thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they, that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the fullest till it overflows. That's the gospel of John chapter 10 and 10. So listen, I've been on this unusual journey, and I'm going to start by telling you a little bit um, I recently revisited an old movie called The Shack. Anybody remember The Shack? All right, I got some folks that remember The Shack. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, but you got to go and watch the movie and see all the spiritual connotations and all the things God is saying to you. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Mac is one of the main characters. He's a father in the movie, but it, it starts out in the movie with Mac growing up. He grew up in a family. That, and they went to church. Matter of fact, his dad was a church leader. His dad was also a closet alcoholic and abusive. Later in, in Mac's life, um, before his childhood was over, Mac's mom soon left them. And Mac, um, he grew up a wounded young, young boy and resentful and later ended up poisoning his abusive dad. So I want to fast forward a little bit. Mac grows up. He gets married. He has his own family. He seems to be a loving and devoted, church-going husband and father. And one day, um, Mac takes his kids on a camping trip. He goes without the mom, the, just him and the three kids. They go on a camping trip. And long story short, his young daughter was kidnapped and later killed. They didn't even find the body. I'm fast forwarding again. They had their memorial service, and the family seems to try to return back to their new norm. Y'all follow me and listen with your spiritual eyes. Um, and so, Mac later one day, it had been snowing outside and everything, and he receives this letter of invitation. And this letter of invitation um, invites him to come back to the very place that his daughter, the loss of his daughter happened. Anybody had to revisit some painful places lately? And this letter was signed by Papa. So follow me. So he goes back and he revisits this old shack, and he finds it empty. But then he runs into Jesus, and Jesus leads him to a new upgraded place. It is there that he meets the triune God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I won't tell you the whole story, but there is there's this particular scene that I want to hang my hat on this morning, and I want you to listen closely to what the God, what the Lord was saying and showing me. And this it's a scene in the movie where Mac, this gentleman Mac, he's hanging out with Jesus, and Jesus tells him we're gonna we're gonna go to the other side. 
So you have a choice. You get to choose whether or not you want to walk on water or you want to ride in the boat. You want to take the boat out. So Mac, of all the stuff that's still going on inside him, he opts for the boat and hops in and he's on his way. And at this instance, once he gets in, he begins to have a flashback of a traumatic moment when his son was drowning and he hears the cry of his son for help as if it's happening right then at that very moment. The bottom of the boat seems to be crashing, muddy, muddy water seems to be flowing into the boat. And Jesus yells out from the land unto Mac in the boat and says, it's not really happening. This is, not what, this is what's really going on inside you. Look at me, Mac. Look at me. Look at me, Mac. And I tell you today that some of us are like Mac, have endured some traumatic experiences, suffered great losses, had disappointments, experienced rejection, thought God should have given us a different outcome, stuck in unforgiveness, oppressed by fear, anxiety, and anger. And God is saying to us today that this is your year to overcome. Oh, somebody ought to rejoice on today because you are about to be remodeled and upgraded. See, we were already made new creatures when we accepted Christ, but sometimes life happens and we need remodeling and we need upgrade. God is saying, I'm still doing a divine reversal. This is indeed the year of divine alignment, and I am still restoring the years. In a world where there are so many distractions, and the enemy will have us to literally nurse, babysit chaos and strongholds and sin, compete with and judge one another, God is calling us on today to look at him. Somebody ought to say, I'm getting in alignment. I was looking here to the left and to the right and all the things and all the news reports and all the things that are going on. And when they said there's going to be a recession and how somebody else treated me and when it took too long for this. And God is saying, look at me. This is the year of a divine alignment. When you go back and you look at this Mac at, at, in this shack, you will see that until this divine meeting with God, he was able to carry on his days and function in his family, but he wasn't living the abundant life Jesus came to give him, a life of peace and joy. Somebody said the kingdom is about peace and joy. He wasn't living that kingdom life. He was in the kingdom but not taking advantage a full advantage of the kingdom life. Is that anybody else's story today? I just want to be a storyteller today because I'm sure you'll find yourself somewhere in the story. But God came for a kingdom life. He needed to be remodeled and upgraded. Remodel, let me explain to you. It means to change or shape differently. And upgrade means to raise the standard. <laughs> raise the standard. Too many times we settle for church life where we get inspiration and momentary relief, but that's not what the blood was shed for. Jesus shed his blood for freedom, for absolute total freedom. Freedom is the absence of subjection to foreign do domination. Uh, nothing else should be dominating you but the Holy Spirit. It's where you're not enslaved or in prison. Freedom is when you have the power to act, to speak, to think as desired without hindrance. God told Mac that he was on a healing journey in this movement and that he would be with him all the way, but it was up to him if he wanted to go any further. Today, I'm asking you to join me and decide whether or not you want to go on this healing journey this year. Decide whether or not, because we receive a lot of prophecies. We know um, the word is divine alignment, that we're overcomers, that God is doing a divine reversal. But prophecy comes, sometimes you have to do your part. Are you willing to go? God wants to remodel and upgrade our lives. Decide with me today that you must face hard truths that we will fall out of agreement with the lies that we believe about ourselves and others. Decide that we will no longer feed demonic oppression like complacency, rejection, fear, unforgiveness, anxiety. We will demolish it with the truth. 
and the revelation of God's love. Oh, his unfailing love. Hallelujah. His amazing grace. Decide that this is the year. This is the year to overcome because you're going to take the opportunity to be remodeled and upgraded. Hallelujah. Anything, anybody know I need to, this, I'm a fixer-upper. I'm a fixer-upper in this moment. And here's where it starts. Look at me, says the Lord of hosts. The healing journey will require us to refocus our attention. When all we see is our pain, our past, our, in our inadequacies, we lose sight of God. And Isaiah 55, 50, um, 45 and 22 reminds us, look to me and be saved, all of you, to the ends of the earth, for I am God. And a savior. There is none besides me. Salvation. Salvation is God's supernatural power to deliver, to rescue us, and redeem our souls from sin and sin's consequences. It's available to every single solitary human being at every stage of this journey called life. Oh, somebody ought to rejoice today. This is a phenomenal year. This is an exceptional time to be in the kingdom. If you've been a believer for 50 years, you can still cry, save me, Lord. Deliver me from this. Deliver me from that. Hallelujah. A good steak dinner at a, at a fine restaurant, a retail therapy at the most renowned shop, VIP in the good old girls club will ne may divert your attention, but it'll never heal you. It'll never heal you. Only the Savior. Only the Savior come to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our souls are not do-it-yourself projects. We must take every care to the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. And today the Lord is saying, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I am peace in the storms of your heart. I am hope in that silences the whispers of guilt and regret and anxiousness that's roaring from your recall. When we refocus our attention on God, he becomes the centerpiece of our soul. Anybody remodeled a house lately? And all you think about, what's going to be the focal point? What's going to be the thing that when people come, they say, wow, let God be the centerpiece of your soul. So in this movie, The Shack, Mac is still so, he's so angry with God for allowing the death of his youngest daughter, that he decides, I'm leaving, I'm out of here. Yeah, I met God. You, you say you're good and everything. I, it's an experience I never had. But he runs, and he runs right into the Holy Spirit, and instead he follows the Holy Spirit into the garden. I encourage someone today, do not let grief shift your perspective of who God is. Be led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells him that she was preparing. Let me stop there before I go any further. One of the things I did not agree with and want to make sure that you understand that she, the Holy Spirit is not a woman. The, the, the triune God is him, is he, is all one God, a masculine and participle. So, so but, but anyway... The, the, the writer uses what he needs to use to, to portray the different characteristics of God. So just follow me. Follow me with this, if you would. So she was preparing the ground that she will be preparing the ground for a new plant. As he follows her in the garden, he says, I'm preparing. Follow me and help me. I'm going to be preparing the ground for a new plant. But first, we must dig up old roots. The Holy Spirit said, come with me and help me. I'm preparing the ground for new, for new plants. But first, we must dig up old roots. The revelation to me is that while remodeled and upgraded sounded real good, it sounds real good, we have to be prepared for that. You don't get the jet just overnight. You have, to, you have to prepare for that by co-laboring with the Holy Spirit to dig up some roots that are not beneficial to the new work. 
not beneficial to the place you're going, not beneficial to the plan of God for our life. So you heard Mac's history at the beginning of the message, abused as a child by his father, abandoned by his mother. Now his baby girl has been murdered. The enemy will set up evil and pain in our lives to steal our joy, to, ki- to, steal our, to kill our faith and destroy our hope in the Lord. But somebody say, but Jesus. Ah, I love John 10 and 10. It's become one of my favorites that the, the enemy comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have. He negates everything the enemy has done by saying, but I have come. And I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Somebody say, love leaves a mark that cannot be erased. Love leaves a mark that cannot be erased. Jesus praised these words at Calvary that covered the soldiers and they cover us today. Father, forgive them. Matthew, it's in the book of Matthew. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Father, forgive them at the cross between two criminals. Our Savior hung on the cross and they were, they were selling, the soldiers were stripped them naked and were selling his clothes. Casting lots to set, to take his clothes, and he he looks up to heaven and says, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." I know it's a it's a it's a challenging message for the first one of the year, but I promise you, if we get this one right, our year goes smoother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Forgiveness, forgiven is the brand, the state that stamped on every believer. We're only in the kingdom because. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus. And it was through the bloodshed of Jesus Christ that we are branded forgiven. <laughs> Literally, it's on my forehead. It's all over me. It's at the, fo- it's at the bottom of my feet. Forgiven. <laughs> it's the reason we're in the kingdom that we get to enjoy these benefits. Forgiveness is the power of love that erases unsightly marks of pain and, 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 and the stain of sin. Hallelujah forgiveness. Right about now, somebody has something coming to their mind uh, about an ex-husband, an old pastor, your parents, an old friend, or maybe it is God that you have accused. I want to remind you today that God is not the author of evil. God is not the author of evil, but I tell you today, I do have good news that he'll use all things to work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Maybe you even mad at yourself, full of regret and guilt. When you're remodeling, you have to let go of the old. You got to get rid of the old stuff. Driving in reverse will never take you somewhere new. You can never drive in reverse and go somewhere new. Unforgiveness is literally, I want to convince you today that we're going to let go every hurt, every disappointment, every pain, and we're going to live in freedom because unforgiveness is a destiny thief. It's a destiny thief. It's the culprit of unanswered prayers because the Bible reminds us in Matthew 6, 14 to 15, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. It steals our peace and our rest. The Bible in Ephesians 4 and 26 says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't even sleep on anger so that it will not turn into unforgiveness. It brings this unity to the body of Christ And in the same Ephesians 4, a little further down, I believe it's verses 27 and 28, the Bible reminds us, and Paul tells us, we're members of one another. And he admonishes us to be kind to one another, be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave. Who do you need to forgive on today? Who do you need to forgive in this very ministry? Jesus prayed for us in John 17. When I say he prayed for us, he prayed for the universal church. That includes your old church that didn't make you head Ursha. He he prayed for us that we would be one. (laughs) 
that we would be one even as he and the Father is one. See, we bring, it brings a breach in the plan of God when we don't forgive one another. The root of unforgiveness literally has to go to put a new plan in. It opens the door to sickness and bitterness and so, so many unwanted results. <laughs> so at the max experience with, with God and walking with God and, 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 and seeking and, and experiencing the wisdom of God and the insight and God giving them understanding, Mac repented. He repented of unforgiveness. And, he, and when he did, he received so much. He got to see the abuse from his dad's childhood and how it shaped his dad's life and, and was passed down to how his dad responded to him. Oh, somebody right now is, is seeing generational curses being destroyed. He got a glimpse of his daughter enjoying heaven. I know we're going to miss our loved ones, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He got an understanding that there is no promise of a pain-free life. There is no promise of a pain-free life. Jesus. There is no promise of a pain-free life. Free life. The kingdom life offers, though, an overcoming grace. <laughs> Somebody rejoice today because it offers us. It means that you get to enjoy if you take advantage of it. An overcoming grace that leads to peace, joy, and hope in the Lord. So it sums it up in three fine words. God is good. Period. God is good. He's good. His goodness. God remodeled Max's perspective, and he can do the same thing for us. Even in the hardest times, God's goodness overtakes us. God is good. He's just good. It's not cliche. It's the truth. It's the character. It's the very nature, the essence of he is. It's what his glory looks like. He's good. Unforgiveness can never be justified. God is the judge. God sees what we don't. And here's a word that we can take with us. Let God be God. It's my new mantra this year. I'm just going to let go and let God be God. And here's our assignment. Let us be imitators of Jesus Christ, where we have a heart to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. A friend of mine jokingly says to me, don't let the devil use you. <laughs> the Apostle Paul says it in this way in the message prayer phrase, and I'm going to close with this last scripture. It's coming from 2 Corinthians, it's chapter 6, and, it, and it's verse 3. When I, when I came to this church, Prophetess Austin taught it to me from the King James to take no offense for the ministry's sake. Take no offense for the ministry's sake. Do not receive any snares or stumbling blocks of offense because I'm called to advance the kingdom. I want to tell you the dramatized version in the message. And this is how it reads. Companions, we are in this work with you. We beg you, don't, please don't. Matter of fact, please don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God has given us. God reminds us, I heard your call in the nick of time. The day you needed me, I was there to help. Well, now it's time, it's right time, the scripture says, it's right time to listen. The day to be helped. Don't put it off. Don't frustrate God's grace and work by showing up late and throwing a question mark over everything we're doing. Our work is as God's servants, gets validated or not in details. People are watching us as we stay at our posts, alertly, unswervingly, in hard times, in tough times, bad times, when we're beaten up, when we jail, when we mob. When we're working hard and when we're working late, when we're working without eating with pure heart, clean head, steady hand, in gentleness, holiness, and honest love, when we're telling the truth and when God is showing his power, when we're doing our best, setting things right, 
when we're praised and when we're blamed, when we're slandered and when we're honored, true to our word, though distrusted, sometimes even ignored by the world, world, but recognized by God. And so God is telling us this year, stay, stay on course. Don't get distracted. Look at me. Take no offense for the ministry's sake. Every time you remember an offense, forgive. This is the year of divine alignment. This is the time to overcome. There is a, a remodel and upgrade awaiting you, but it's up to you on today. Will I remove, dig out the roots of those things that hinder a planning of the newness of life that God wants to give us? Praise the Lord on today, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look for and look at the God of our salvation. I want to offer salvation to someone today. I want every backslider to be returned to Jesus now in the name of Jesus. Today is the day of your salvation. We, we, we invite you to Jesus. We invite you to, to forgive, to be forgiven, to have your slate clean, to be rid of fear, rid of rejection, rid. <laughs> you are, the truth is, you are the beloved of God. He had you in mind when he sent Jesus. So today, you can be saved. You can receive Jesus. You can have a new life. You can have an upgrade. Will you receive Jesus? Inbox us. Put something in the comments. Call us, or better yet, meet us here at 11 a.m. If you've been stuck in unforgiveness today, you're a believer, but you've been stuck in unforgiveness today. We want to pray for you. We want to minister to you. We have no judgment zone here. We all understand, and we need thee every hour. We invite you. We want to invite you to give on today. If this word bless you, if you know uh, the, the, the way to a uh, foolproof recession is to give. So uh, the, the information is on the screen, and we invite you to give on today. Thank you now for sowing into this ministry. I want to close this out in prayer, but I want to invite you to 1418 Avondale Drive here in Durham, North Carolina, Wings of Eagles Christian Church, where we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We invite you to come and join us in person today. Hallelujah. There is a word waiting for you. I just gave you an icebreaker, but I know the full course is coming. We invite you today to join us. Father, I bless you now for these, your people, for every hearer now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Every heart, everything in the recesses of their heart, I thank you now that they have an ear to hear you on today, Lord God. And you've given them the power to forgive, God, your desire is, God, that they have an abundant life, a kingdom life, Lord God. Let them come into the realization, totally embrace the fullness of all that you have in this, in this year for them, Lord God. And I thank you for digging up and removing every stumbling block in their lives. I call them healed from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I said the gate of hell should not prevail in their life. I said they are strong in the Lord and the power and light of your might, God. And I ask now, God, that you draw them nearer. And, God, that they draw nearer willingly. God, I thank you now for your word. It says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. This is the year to overcome. I bless you now, God. Have your way in every life. We cover them now in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining our service today. We believe that your life will be changed through this message. If you would like to learn more about Wings of Eagles Christian Church, please visit woechristianchurch.com. Tap the About tab to know our pastors. Tap Contact to connect with us. Feel free to also see Inside Woe. On Sunday we have a virtual Thrive teaching on Facebook at 9.30 and in-person corporate worship at 11 a.m. with our full band and praise team. In keeping with our mission and vision, Woe has many ministries designed to train, equip, and provide hands-on support to every member of your family. If you would like to make a donation, then feel free to give via text message. Step 1. Text GIVE25 or any other amount to 919-551-3675. Step 2. Follow the prompts. Step 3. Register your credit or debit card. It's only required for the first time only. 
Join us virtually on Facebook at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening for Life Class. Visit us in person at 1418 Avondale Drive, Durham, North Carolina, 27701 Suite 15. Hey, if you're still down, don't stay grounded. Get up and soar high.